But actually one big thing that I want to come back to and a mistake that I see people make is my advice from the beginning is just, I'd love to give an example because this is something for the clients I work with that we really obsess over. That's something that the best essays, uh, personal statements do. Everyone using ChatGPT thinks they're so clever. As someone who reads a ton of essays, I can smell ChatGPT BS from a mile away. Hi everyone, welcome back to Chats with Dylan Nav. I'm Dr. Dylan Cahill. And I'm Dr. Navi Kafari. And we're recent graduates of Harvard Medical School and I spend a lot of our time advising students on all parts of the medical school application process. Between the two of us, we've edited hundreds of personal statements for applicants to medical school. And we wanted to kind of share our top tips for someone who's working through theirs right now. To kick it off really quick, what should someone know about the personal statement before they even get started? Importantly, it's an opportunity to share your story, why you want to go to medical school, why you want to become a doctor. And so it's a really special part of the application where you really can make it your own. And so you want to make sure that you're putting in a good amount of time to really Really craft that story to have it be well written um, and to really have it ideally stand out in a good way for your application. And so the question becomes, how do you do that? So on the medical school application, there's different character lengths to be aware of. What you should know is it's going to be about 5,300 characters for AMCAS and ACOMAS, two of the main application types. And if you're applying to Texas schools, that's capped at 5,000 characters. In all cases, it works out to being a little over a page, page and a half in length. Single space. Importantly, the question is, okay, how do you get started? Um, this is a difficult process as pretty much everyone who's gone through the process can attest to. You're going to want to start by just asking yourself, what have been the important experiences that have made me want to become a physician? What are the attributes about myself that I think would make for a good physician? And it can be very daunting to just start right away and feel like you have to form sentences and have them flow nicely and be polished. My advice from the beginning is just don't worry about any of that. Even if it's just bullets, just start writing ideas down list out as many of the activities that were really important to you. Once again, the attributes and just start taking those bullets, turning them into some sentences and see whether that you feel like is capturing your essence. I would expect to have a lot of different drafts that are not really going to feel like are going well. And that's important because you get more clarity by ruling those out and having sort of the stronger ideas survive further until the ones that stand the end are the strongest. And one tip to kind of summarize summarize what you're saying that I love says write drunk and edit sober. And while I don't actually advocate for alcoholism, I think you should actually have that mentality of I'm just putting it on paper. I don't even care if it's grammatical. I don't care if this is going to make it into a final draft. I'm putting all my thoughts down. And then with a clear mind tomorrow or in a couple days, I'm going to go back through and then meticulously edit it, cut things out, move things around. And you can go through that process multiple times. Another sort of fun activity, if you don't even know like how to get started at all, uh, is write a list as long as you can aim for a hundred reasons of why you want to be a physician and literally try to list every single one. Try to get to a hundred. The, the fame, the prestige, the money, all of that could be in there too. But then, you know, if some way you'll find the sincere of, oh, I really love volunteering and like the impact I made on that individual that one time. And I respected this individual who I shadowed and the way they advocated and so on. And from that, that's just kind of a, a way of getting all the thoughts down on paper. And you can kind of distill from that. Then what are the core stories? Because that's what should emerge as you actually start to write and go through this iterative process of drafting your personal statement. And so let's say that's where we're at. We've we've thought about it. We've gotten our thoughts down on paper, or at least done a lot of reflection in our head. How do you recommend to be structuring the personal statement? So there's definitely no one size fits all. One structure method that I personally use that was really helpful. And the, the main one that I uh, suggest to my students is intro paragraph where you really open up with one sentence of like a hook. You want to grab the person's attention, some sort of personal story that you then talk about that's related to why you are interested in medicine and really ending that intro paragraph with honestly like a thesis statement about you about why you want to do this mm -hmm. where the next like two to four body paragraphs are really going in depth into those specific attributes that you alluded to in that thesis statement and then ultimately your last paragraph being your conclusion you're tying in all these ideas connecting those dots and you ideally tie back to the story that you brought up in your first paragraph just as a really nice way of, you know, circling back and then ending on a big sentence of something punchy to leave the reader, you know, with a really nice taste right. in their mouth. And I'd love to give an example because this is something for the clients I work with that we really obsess over. And I spend a lot of time in my editing. A disproportionate amount is this opening hook. The hook sets the stage for the essay and grips the reader in. But then you can, if you come back to it at the conclusion, that's something that the best personal statements do. And so I, I still remember from like a couple of years ago, a client I was working with, his story was a lot 
about his interest in dermatology and that evolved out of his the acne he had as a teenager and so working with him we determined like he could start his essay with like a dramatic line like I could hardly look at myself in the mirror and then kind of explaining like that actual like emotional toll of dealing with it and through his essay talked about uh, how his dermatologist helped change his life around give him clearer skin give him confidence shadowing and doing research and all this and then in the final line he said something like now when I look in the mirror I have the confidence of blah 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 you know someone who has taken action and who can inspire others that kind of thing and the way it started with that very like visual like whoa why can't this guy look at himself in the mirror and then coming back to that in the conclusion was like almost like gives you chills the way you know that essay is just so polished and the best essays absolutely have that quality of coming full circle in a way that leaves an impression and makes your essay truly memorable and definitely as you're working through it and wondering like oh like what's my story how do i really make it tie back nicely by giving yourself a decent runway of time to do this personal statement and allow time for edits from family, friends, mentors, they will add to just giving you good perspectives that you can take to just make your essay as polished, um, as strong and just flow as nicely as possible. Absolutely. And there's a lot of free examples online and you can kind of pick and choose from those what you like that can also help you get started. I think we can transition now into some cautionary tales. Um, so number one for me, everyone using ChatGPT thinks they're so clever. As someone who reads a ton of essays, I can smell ChatGPT BS from a mile away, okay? As soon as it's starting to sound generic, you're about to embark on a journey and delve into the intricacies of medicine and all this flowery language and it's crucial, uh, pivotal there's so many kind of words that in aggregate uh really take away that like key personal human element that your voice has and is conveyed through through this process of essay writing and revisiting it and so if you're going to use ai writing tools use them sparingly and just as a tool as a reference but make sure it's your own so just be careful other things to look out for pitfalls mistakes you see navid i'd say it's just make sure it's authentic make sure it's you you want to be consistent throughout your application and your activity in your personal statement. Ideally, you know, this personal statement is part of your primary application. There's a secondary, and then hopefully there's an interview. And in your interview, that's another opportunity. One of the most classic questions is like, why do you want to go to medicine? And you want to be able to have there be consistency. And if what you're saying there does not really map onto what you wrote in the personal statement, that that would that would be a red flag. And make sure that the writing is really polished. You don't want to have any poor grammar, spelling mistakes, very small mistake, but can have a big consequence. Yeah. Yeah, a couple things to add. As a general rule, just for formality of writing, I typically say don't use contractions. Um, I think that can make it a little less formal. Other thing, the period and the comma always go inside the quotes in American English. That's an American English standard. So when they're outside or done inconsistently, that, you know, again, to someone who's reading a lot of these essays will jump out as someone, you know, you didn't pay a ton of attention to the final touches. But actually one big thing that I want to kind of come back to and a mistake that I see people make is they write this essay advocating for themselves as an applicant and it doesn't answer the core question of why they want to be a physician. It talks about how they got involved in the sciences and this incredible research they've done and published and why they really loved working for that NGO that summer. And then it just states at the end in a way that almost doesn't fit with the rest of the essay that now I want to be a physician. And it's like, why? Why not be a PhD working in a lab? Why not work full time at that NGO? So again, at like a higher level, if you really want to make your essay stand out, you have to make sure that you're intentional about the language of like, why? it's actually a physician and not some other healthcare profession or something else. And, you know, there's subtle ways to do that in, in wording and stuff. One example is if you actually truly felt limited in one of your roles. Maybe you were a scribe in the emergency department or a volunteer, and maybe you were part of like a patient's care up to a certain point, but then never got to like be part of the full treatment planning and follow up and, and the rest. You can mention that, that feeling that you were limited in your previous role and now you want to move beyond that and take more like ownership over the full lifespan of a patient's care as a physician. I would just be mindful of that in the later stages of really making sure you're keyed in on why a physician and specifically a physician. These are great points. These are just some initial background on what the personal statement is, why it's important, some tips and some uh, some do's and don'ts. And so we hope that was helpful. We know that this application process has a lot of moving parts and is not easy. And so uh, we're wishing everyone all the best and uh, hope to put out some more helpful content. Feel free to like, subscribe, drop us a comment let us know what other questions you have and we'll be happy to make more content in the near future bye bye now bye bye